All right, here you go. The main voyage. Yeah, I don't know if it's... it says I'm only 83, which I doubt. It's, it seems like it might be locked on, Mike. I don't know. It's the temperature's changing. Yeah. I think it got robbed. Would you open it, the valve? I did. I'm a little concerned about the uh, fact that there's no room for expansion. Until something breaks and it sprays hot water in there. It's doing good, I mean. Yeah, considering. It's, 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 it's blowing off heat from the radiator, so. Yeah. You know, I don't know how much temperature it's That's the battery chamber. <laughs> it's broken. Oh. That wasn't cheap either. Alright, we've had it run for 20 minutes now. And uh, Mike wants to take some readings. Take some uh, take some off of the, the cooler itself. Three, one twenty-four. Right, about one twenty-five. Yeah. Like I say, it's been running twenty-five minutes, or right, twenty, at least twenty minutes. How about the head itself? Yeah, the head indicates only ninety-six, but I've had trouble using a, an infrared temp gun right. on anything metallic, like reflective. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. I'm surprised the paint isn't giving me problems. Hmm. Now, over on the radiator. Using, I'm going off of this area here. Just because it's. You know, let me get on this side because the muffler is. Uh, 130. 132. 132. Yeah, let's see. So, the average temperature of a, a regular uh, air cooled is what, Mike? 180 something? Well, no, I mean, if you. Had a temp on an air-cooled cylinder head, and then after it's been running it at a, for any amount of time, it's going to be close to 300 degrees. Wow. 250, 300 degrees. So that's that's warm. Yeah. Actually, actually, uh, we'll see how it hot. does if it gets saturated with heat. I mean, I feel the heat loss mm -hmm. from the radiator. It's not a hurricane wind, but right. I, you know, it's definitely hot up here and right. not so hot down here. Right. So there is some heat loss to the radiator. And all our pipes are warm, so we know we're circulating. Yeah, definitely circulating. Hmm. There's no way you could not circulate with a, with a gear pump. I know, I know. I mean, if, you, if that gear pump needed to, with water, it could build 40 pounds of water pressure. You know, easy. Well, I'm happy. That's a maiden uh, voyage there, so to speak. Yeah. And it started right up. I didn't, I didn't get you started, so... Uh, I'll have to show these guys where you started. Yeah, started you know, right it, it was it started right up and then a little bit of adjustment like everything. Kind right. Of fun. All right. I'm quite happy. I mean, the chains aren't the, the noise of the yeah, right. chains is not offensive at all. We probably could tighten them up a little bit. They're, they are wiggling, but they are working. So. Yeah, I'm not really concerned with it. No. That fan, that fan is kicking ass. Look at that. Yeah. It don't it don't look like it on here because of the, the way film is. Oh yeah. But. Uh, you can, you can actually see through the fan and see the fin. Pretty cool. Spectators coming out of the woodwork. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're on YouTube, buddy. No? Nah? Alright. You're probably wanted by the police or something. <laughs> Alright. We're going to get Mike when he's starting it later on. Right now we're going to let him run for another 20 minutes or so. Alright. Me and Mike did a little fine tuner on this and we're going to see the start. We use the heat gun on it, and it's not that accurate on the on these metallic surfaces. The only the only place we were getting decent readings were like on the black portion right here and around front here where there's uh, metal. But but on everything else, they were erratic. So we're getting readings of about 130 tops, right? 
Yeah, yeah. It, after about 25 minutes of running, it hits close. It hits 140, but again, it, yeah, that's, that's after a long time. Yeah, but that's no. That's not even operating temperature right. of an engine. You know, it's in reality it should be higher, but you know, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, you got gas now. Let's see the start. Yeah, it start. I got the choke on. Uh, this is the first thing in the morning. Place, look, the place isn't even full yet. Hmm. Yeah, so it starts and runs good. We had to run, we, we, we run until it runs out of gas. It only gets about 25 minutes on a tank. Yep. But then, that, that uh, tube isn't really going down that far. We have to extend that, but uh, what we got, we can get 25 minutes out of it. Yeah. And it's happy, so uh, what do you need? we're glad, we're happy with it. Take a look around back here. So, we'll let it run and wear in a little bit, and then we'll uh, take a little video later on. Maybe, maybe when we get a few crowds, like I say. Right now it's uh, what is it, about eight o'clock in the morning, Mike. Yeah. Uh, eight o'clock Saturday morning. The last two days have been a lot of rain, so really nobody showed up. But uh, today should be a good day. Let's go over here, see Mike's witty. We're back from the show, and uh, we're real pleased the way this thing ran. I mean, it was uh, pretty much flawless, but uh, there were a few changes that we, we noticed. You know, like we never really test run this until we brought it to the show, and uh, there are a few things we'd like to change. The chains were fine, you know, so it was not like we had any kind of tension or there, so that worked out well. And uh, we were running it as an open system, which means that. I just I just opened this a little bit, you know, so the air would come out, you know, so it wouldn't build up pressure. And uh, even though it wasn't squirting out, every once in a while you'd get a bubble out of there, which is to be expected, and it was dripping water. And it looked like it was leaking, it looked like the whole thing was leaking, and I didn't like that. So I think what we're going to do is uh, we are going to put an expansion chain tank on here. We'll probably just run here and uh, maybe I'll build a, a brass or a copper... Uh, tube here you know for overflow that way uh, we can we can run a closed system and another thing right here even though this this is okay and everything so many people wanted to see the water I think that we will just we'll put a clear tube here you know it's easy enough to do but uh, other than that there's really not much uh, to change on this I mean at the temperature stage it's about 135 to 140 and oh yeah, another thing we're gonna we gotta lengthen the gas uh, suction tube there, you know, because it would only uh, run for about 25 minutes. And if we extend that down to the bottom, we should be able to get maybe 45 minutes out of it. All right, I think we got a phone call. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. I was uh, just President Trump calling to congratulate us on a successful show. But uh, another thing here, you see how how hot the, the engine runs internally and stuff from the this got this colored but everything else was running cool and this is this the way it should be so that come up with a nice uh, almost you can't tell under these lights but it's like a goldish patina and I kind of like it and that was from uh, Vinny Baggett's Corner made that for us at the stainless steel exhaust there so while I'm at it I, I want to thank everybody that stopped by the, the booth and uh, Checked out the water cool man. It was a really, really great uh, sh uh, amount of people that showed up and, and talked and uh, all kinds of stuff. It was pretty cool. And uh, some guys talked for a while. So I want to thank uh, Rob. That was, uh, I think his YouTube name is uh, RDG2124. He's got a good channel over there. He does a lot, of, a lot of train stuff and. Uh, I think he, he owns a lot of little, uh, them little pulley cars that uh, go along the tracks there. They call them fair mounts or stuff like that, service cars. But uh, I'll leave a link to him in the, in the description there. And uh, I want to thank him for his contribution. He uh, 
he gave us a little donation. As a matter of fact, it was a pretty big donation to uh, to the cause here. And uh, we also had a Ron. I want to thank Ron. He's another one that gave us a, a contribution. And another Rob. We had another Rob that gave us a contribution. We really appreciate that. That helps. That helps a whole lot. And then I want to thank Scotty. Scotty for stopping by and uh, talking with us for a while. And Kai and his dad, Kai Samuelson and his dad stopped by and, and we, we had a great chat with him. And I wish him well with his engines. He's got a, a bunch of little engines he's trying to get to working. And let's see who else we have here. We had Tom stop by, and Barry, and John, Dan and his dad, and family from Rhode Island. They came all the way. This was about a 300 mile trip for them. Or a four, four hour drive. Just I don't know if they came just to see me or to the show, but uh, I appreciate that. And then the dude with the Ford hat. I forgot his name, but uh, you know who I'm talking about. And also, uh, these guys didn't show up at the show, but uh, I got to thank them for for helping us with this project. Because without them, you know, this this project may not have been finished. We have our buddy Steve. He goes by uh, on YouTube, 99 Car Knot. He's made uh, quite a few donations to the, the cause, and he's always sending us some kind of stuff for, to to keep us going books and uh, tools and stuff and Terry Terry the Texas Viking with him we, we might not have been able to do this because uh, this is his handiwork right here this uh, well that doesn't leak and uh, we appreciate that he went out of his way for us on that one so thanks for that so we're gonna uh, leave Terry's uh, link in the Texas Viking we're gonna leave his link in the description too and Tim Yader, we might have forgotten about him because it was so long ago, but he's the one that helped us get this engine running event, uh, originally because it had the bad valve seat in there, and uh, he sent us the valve cutter. So thanks again, Tim. And there was a lot of other guys that uh, offered to send me a cutter and, uh, you know, use it and send it back. There was a dozen guys that did that. I think a couple guys even told me send the block and they'll do it. So we appreciate that. We appreciate all the help we get. And then uh, Ralph Fisher. Ralph Fisher actually is from Australia. And he sent me a whole, let me put it over here, a whole valve cutting set for the little engines. Here's all your uh, different size valve guides and everything. And here's the cutter. And this, this isn't cheap. This is a new way. This, this is the top of the line best you can get. I don't know if you can see that with the light, but, uh, and this here, there's actually two different sizes, you know, one's uh, 36 degrees on one side, which I think might be the intake, and then 46 degrees on the other side, which is the exhaust. It could be, it could be opposite, but anyway, that's what that is. And these, these are brand new sharp on here. These are crazy sharp, so we appreciate that and the handle. So not, not only is this a very expensive set, but he sent it from Australia which cost him uh, $60. So we really appreciate that too. And uh, all the comments, I mean we got some great comments on this. I mean, I'm not talking about the trolls and everything. You know, I'm talking about the people that are really interested in this engine and wanted to see it built. And uh, all the comments were great, you know, so a lot of them helped us too. From the, the goofy ridiculous to the brilliant ideas that we got. Even the, the ridiculous ones, you know, people say as a joke you should do this, you should do that. And sometimes we get stuff out of that, you know, you say, you know, it's a good idea if we do it this way or that way, or, but, you know, if the idea is thrown our way, we can do something with it. So, like I said, we appreciate all the comments from everybody and the support, you know, I mean, this was a long build. Half the build was uh, the valve cut, we, you know, we didn't know we were going to run into that. And then the radiator itself, that was, that was a project in itself. And there were a lot of guys that were behind me, a lot of guys weren't behind me, but... Uh, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, I lucked out. You know, it worked in my favor, but it may have went the other way. And uh, like I say, it ran great. You know, I mean, some people were worried about the flywheel blowing apart and, and hurting somebody. Others were worried about the the chain flying off and killing somebody. But uh, all in all, it worked out pretty good. So that's where we're at. I hope you all, all you guys enjoyed it because we enjoyed doing it. And uh, 
that's it for this one we'll have to move on to something else all right uh ralph i didn't i don't i don't have a ralph sent me this i have his address his name and everything his social security number is uh his family's name and name and everything, but I don't have his uh, YouTube name, so uh, leave me a comment there, and uh, we'll, we'll put you down there, and we'll leave a link to all all these guys that uh, helped out and donated in the description. So go over and check out their channels, cause they mean a lot to us. All right, another one down. Enough of this. All right, we forgot to uh, include a, a huge. Uh, portion of my my build here and everything like that it's uh, my patrons that, that helped me I had a list here of all people and it just I meant to put it on the bottom of the list and I didn't so uh, I want to thank all my patrons there for their they, their, their steady contributions and uh, they help us a whole lot so uh, I don't want to leave them out I want to thank them so uh, thanks to all you anybody that ever contrib contributed to, to anything we've done here we, we appreciate it, and it goes a long way. All right, thanks again. All right, here's someone else. <clears throat> I, almost, I almost forgot this, and I'm, I'm sorry. But uh, this, uh, this wasn't part of the build, but this guy, Kurt, has seen, seen me uh, countersinking a, a hole on this engine or uh, one, of the, one of the pieces of the project. And he seen me countersinking with it with just an oversized drill, and he sent me an email and says you don't you don't have the proper countersinks, and he sent me these. These things are beautiful here. You know, there's two different sizes here. It tells you which which one they go up to. So, uh, and along with that, he sent an assortment of metric metric taps here, brand new metric taps, and they're, they're sharp as hell. And uh, you know, I, I have a, a, a metric set, but they're they're so tiny, you know. But nothing this big. And uh, these will these will come in handy for sure. But they're uh, all all really uh, top of the line. Here's one. Here's one made in Germany. You know, when you get something made from Germany, it's uh, top quality. And the rest of them are made in the U.S., I believe. I think one was Mexico too. But anyway. We really appreciate that. Also, he sent uh, along with that an assortment of stainless steel uh, screws. I call these buttonhead, buttonhead Allen heads, Allen screws, buttonhead Allen screws, and uh, a good assortment of them too. And these are uh, couplers. Or sometimes they use them for standoffs. More buttonhead uh, Allen screws. And then uh, just some uh, big stainless steel screws. Well, we appreciate that. That's uh, from Curtis, and he goes by uh, Crispy Spa or Crispy's Pa. I'm not sure. I would I would imagine it's probably Crispy's Pa. But uh, I'm gonna leave uh, I'm gonna leave a link to his channel in the description too. So uh, go over and check out these guys that uh, help us out and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. So uh, that'll be it for this video. Thanks again. Thanks everybody for everything. We really do appreciate it. Alrighty, enough of this.